Um, but to, to move on with this episode, just because we wanted to get stuff out there really quick on him, we're going to be grading this whole team, and we're going to be starting out with, with the hitting side. So just kind of looking at the Padres, you know, last year they are one of the top hitting teams in the league. Right now they stand at 19th in OPS and in team OPS and 12th in average. Um, they were definitely a lot farther down the list a couple weeks ago, but there's been a sudden surge in the offense. So I'll let you start, Ryan. What are What is your overall grade for this team from a hitting perspective? I'm going to go with like C plus B minus, but like I haven't turned in my assignments yet, but I have them done. You know, like I'm not worried. I know I'm going to get the A, right? Oh, professor, I just need a, an extension on this assignment. I need something here. It's going to be fine. Manny's squaring everything up. He keeps lining out. Those are going to fall in. Like it's, it's still fairly early. I know we're getting to the point in the season where you can't really say that soon, but it's still, you know, what, we're 40 games in or so. I'm not worried. So far, has it been everything I had dreamed of? No. We're also down five regulars as we speak. Uh, Tatis was hurt for a while. Nola's been out. Grisham missed time. Will Myers missed time. Hosmer's missed the last week. It, it is, and even the guys that have been playing, Machado, isn't 100% healthy. So it's not, it hasn't been perfect yet. It's still passing. They're still winning. So I'm not going to give it an, a failure by any means because they're hitting enough to win. I'm also not worried about getting to that A level that I, I know they'll be at at some point relatively soon. And if not, it'll be by the playoffs. It'll be there. Uh, I mean, it's kind of hard to give them like a certain grade because we saw in the first, you know, so far through the first half of the season, like the first 20 games or so, they were doing an absolutely horrendous job at bringing runners in, bringing like just hitting with runners in scoring position. I remember one exact instance, no outs, bases loaded, leave with no runs. I mean, you got to leave with something right there. Um, so I think, I think I'm going to give them a B minus, maybe a B, but that's just because now they're really starting to come around. And now we're starting to see, you know, how hungry this team is. This team is really hungry. They want to be successful really bad. And, you know, against the Cardinals, who at the time had the second best record in the NL, they go in with a couple of AAA guys who, who, you know, they're out there trying to make a name out of themselves. And they go out there and they sweep the Cardinals, who had just acquired Nolan Arenado and who beat us one game in the wild card. So they were already a good team, and they just added the best defensive third baseman and a top two third baseman in baseball. Man, he's number one. <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, overall, B- minus I think is a good grade for them. And I think they're going to, you know, when Tatis is back, Myers is back, they're they're going to reach their – they have – I would honestly say they have not scratched their ceiling yet, not even close. So when this team gets going, they're going to be probably the scariest offense in baseball. Yeah, I'm going to give them a C. Just like Isaac said, we haven't really scratched the surface of the ceiling that we could do. We have a couple guys hitting really hot, you know, actually doing outdoing our expectations of them, like Grish and them. And then we've had some guys coming back from injuries and just guys who haven't been performing, a.k.a. fam. So... I'm going to give them a C. We've had some guys, actually, we've been hitting better right now from the guys that have been coming out of AAA. We've been hitting with runners in scoring position and capitalizing, so yeah, that brings the grade up. I just want to see our starters do the same thing, especially when everybody gets back and see this offense actually thrive at the high level that they're capable of playing. Yeah, so you kind of look around just how everyone's played, and there's three guys I think that have over overperformed. Eric Hosmer, Trent Grisham, and Jake Cronenworth at, at least perform to a level where I'm comfortable saying that, hey, these guys are playing really well. You know, both Grisham and Hosmer are hitting over 300. Cronenworth is currently hitting 288, and we know he gets on base a ton. And you look at the other positions, all right, we have, you know, the two corner outfield spots. In one of them, it's a pro-far fam outfield. Fam's definitely struggled. And the other one, it's been Will Myers. Will Myers has been, I, I think, himself. We know how he can be kind of a, a, a streaky hitter, as almost all these guys are in the lineup. And then the other spot is catcher, um, if you if we're not talking about the left side of the infield yet. And at catcher, you didn't have Austin Nola for a long time. He's came in. I mean, we've seen immediately impact from him. A tremendous series last weekend. And he's a guy that, that we were expecting to be that main catcher. And then we have Caratini as the other guy. And, I mean, he's been – how great is Caratini being? I think he's maybe exceeded expectations the most. And so that leaves us with this left side of the infield. And you have Machado and Tatis who – I think that you could say they've struggled in terms of getting on, but they've, I mean, Machado's brought in a ton of runs and Tatis has hit a ton of bombs early on. So when those two really start feeling it 
and get their average up to where it's normally at, you know, 270 plus, they're going to be terrifying. I mean, the, the only spot that really is a question then is left field. So I think they're going to be totally fine. With that said, they haven't really put up great numbers yet. So I think you have to say, like, based on just this pure talent, I'd say I give them like a C plus, but we're going to see them improve a lot. So I'll let you start out with that. How much do we think they're going to improve in these last three quarters of the season? And, and Ryan, you can start it off. I mean, there's no doubt. That's why you have such a deep team. And if a Tommy Pham ends up having a bad year, which so far it has been, now, month of May, he's got an OBP north of 350. I know it's only like, you know, 12 games or whatever it is, but that's his game. He's a high on base guy. So if he can turn it around a little bit, anyways, sorry. The reason you build such a deep team is that when guys are struggling a little bit, Cronenworth has a bad week, Will Myers is banged up, whatever. Other dudes step up. Now, I don't think this team was so deep that it was supposed to have John Andrioli, Brian O'Grady, Tucapito Marcano, uh, Ivan Castillo all playing in the same game. I don't think we were supposed to be that deep. But the reason you build such a deep roster is that not everyone clicks at the same time. And the only time it really, really matters that almost everyone's clicking at the same time is October. And as long as we have three, four in the lineup who are playing, playing well, like Grisham is right now, Manny keeps hitting the ball hard, Hosmer's been playing well, Cronenworth's been playing well, as long as we have guys like that, at some point Grisham's going to have a bad two-week stretch. And I guarantee you Will Myers will step up at that point. Machado will step up at that point. Nola will be a stud. Like, I'm not that worried about everyone clicking at once. It, it, it's more that I just need everyone to be good and healthy to go come playoff time. And at the end, as it's such a deep roster, over 162, which is the only real season, and fake seasons don't count, um, they're going to be fine. The numbers will be right where they need to be. we got a ton of veterans, a ton of young blood. This offense will be just fine. I'm not worried about them at all. Yeah, we've brought it up a couple of times. If you get Tatis and Machado going at the MVP level that they were last year, you had Tatis first in the MVP race at one point, and then you had Machado who ended up finishing above Tatis. That is by far and away the scariest duo and the scariest they, – that automatically makes it the scariest offense in baseball because now you got those guys batting one and three or two and three, and they're bringing in runners like crazy. They're bringing in – Machado's bringing him in like crazy, and – I mean, like I said, this offense hasn't even scratched their ceiling yet. They have the potential to be the best offense in baseball, and that's even with the Dodgers. Even if they're healthy with Seager, Bellinger, Betts, Turner, even if they're healthy, I'll take a hot Tatis, Machado, Grisham, and even Hosmer's, uh, Hosmer has been the best guy with two outs with runners in scoring position. He's been very clutch. I'll take those guys any day because they're just – you know, they've been, they're going to start producing very soon. Tatis and Machado have not heated up yet, but when they do, man, good luck. Because that's going to be, that's going to be something to see. I think the most important takeaway from like the first quarter of the season is that even when our guys, our main guys go down, our bench pieces are more than capable of t stepping in and actually performing at the level that they need to. Like when we came into the series, we probably were like, okay, you know what? We're probably only going to win one game. We are missing five guys. We have Patrick Cullen, even Castillo, and a bunch of other AAA guys in the lineup. It's not going to look pretty, but we probably played our best offensive baseball that series with those guys. So seeing those guys perform without, you know, all our superstars in, it shows how deep this offense is, how great it can be when everybody is in and playing at the level that they're supposed to be. Yeah, I think that this this is definitely an, an offense where I, I don't think anyone should have freaked out or, you know, panicked about, hey, they're not producing, not producing. I think if anything, we've kind of seen that it just shows that this team can win in different ways. Um, and we'll get into the pitching here in just a second. But you have a team that's just dominating in the pitching department and you're still able to win. And your so-called struggles have led you to be second in the NL. Like that's where they are standing right now when we were recording this. They're second in the NL. And like we said, their offense hasn't, it hasn't been healthy. And, you know, the, the Dodgers offense hasn't been healthy either because that's like the other team and then all that's, you know, really up there. That's fine. But both these offenses hasn't, haven't been healthy and the putters are going to bounce back. You know, a lot of these teams in the NL, you have like a lot of offenses, especially for, for the NL West, you're looking at the Giants and their offenses, you know, Buster Posey has been carrying them. But for the Padres, they, they haven't had like like guys to really just dominate. And, and once someone really breaks out can, and can take over, 
I think we saw that with Trent Grisham a little earlier in the year, right when he got healthy, it was like, boom, you know, Grisham's just playing like a star. Also, side note, Trent Grisham is a star, everyone. I mean, he's been he's been a top 10 war player since the start of 2020. I think I said that on the last segment, but it needs to be talked about more because he is very, very underrated. And like when you have him, Tatis, and Machado, if you have two of those guys going off at the same time, that lineup gets so much scarier. We saw that last year with Will Myers when those guys were really cruising and he started able to see some more pitches a little bit farther down the lineup. He can flourish. You're going to see that with Austin Nola. You're going to see that with a lot of these guys that just haven't able to have, they haven't had the consistency yet to really break out. And we've already seen how great this team is when their their hitters are playing below, below their expectations and, and not playing up to par. There's no reason that we should panic about Tatis and Machado's average being so low or, you know, they're not producing in turn, on offense. We know what their current numbers are. We know what they're going to end up being around at the end of the year. And that's going to be enough to to really let this team just take off. So I, I think that's where we'll kind of wrap it up with with the offensive grades. 